Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at literal equations and dimensional analysis from section 2.8. And we have two learning targets. First, I can solve literal equations for any variable. And second, I can use dimensional analysis to solve real-world problems and also to prevent real-world problems. And I'll explain what I mean by prevent real-world problems uh, when I give you the assignment at the end of this. There is a very a unique case that happened um, that, that clearly demonstrates the importance of doing dimensional analysis correctly. Uh, it was actually a life and death situation um, simply because somebody did not uh, carry the dimensions forward correctly. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. First, a literal equation. What is it really? It's an equation that has several variables basically is what it is. And when we solve this type of equation, we're not going to get a clean answer like x equals 3 or x equals 2. We're going to get an answer that's in terms of the other variables that are around it. So whatever variables are in the problem, that's how our answer is going to be expressed when we're, when we're solving a literal equation. So let's look at these. We have these formulas that are jumbled up here uh, in different ways, and now we're going to solve for h in all the cases. So in this first one, Basically, what we want to do is first, uh, we'll just lay down the train tracks first. And then we'll go ahead and, uh, and solve. So now, uh, in this first one, um, we want to get h by itself. So basically, we can uh, multiply both sides by h first. So when we do that, if we multiply both sides by h, we'll end up here with v equals l w and now times h. Again, we multiply this left side by h on the top and bottom. That would cancel out. We'd be left with v. And we multiply this side by h. We'd have l w h. And now we just divide both sides by l w and we'll be left with h. So if we take this divided by LW and then this side divided by LW then we're ending up then that cancels out. We get V over LW equals H. Now in this one, same thing, we'll put our tracks in. This will be easy now, especially after we've done the first one. We're simply going to divide both sides by LW. Uh, and when we do that, again, we'll be left with V over LW equals H. So again, I'll just make it a little clearer over here, but it's going to be the same thing, V over LW. H. And over here now all we simply have to do is just divide both sides by W and again we'll end up with V over LW equals H. So we had the same formula jumbled up and, and I did this for a reason to show that no matter how we do all this up together, what order we go in and things, we're still going to end up with the same solution for H in all the cases. It's going to be V over LW equals H in all the cases. So um, when we're solving literal equations, again the key thing to remember is your answer is going to be in terms of the variables that are in the problem. You're not going to get x equals 2. And for some people, they don't like that. They like to have it nice and straightforward. But um, uh, this is more straightforward in some ways because you don't have to actually do any calculations. You're just manipulating the variables um, using the rules of algebra. OK, so that's literal equations. Now, let's look just a little bit at dimensional analysis. 
Um, first, what it really is, is just the process of carrying units correctly throughout a problem. Uh, it can be extremely important, as I told you about that example at the beginning, um, I just touched on a little bit, and I'm going to give you an assignment relating to that in just a second. But all it is is carrying the units correctly throughout a problem. So if you get a question, for example, how many miles in a 10K race? So if you're involved in running at all, or if you watch running, uh, a lot of the races are in terms of kilometers. And, and sometimes it's nice to know how many miles you're talking about. A lot of people, when they're training and things, will use miles um, to train with, and so that's what they're used to. So they want to have some idea what they're talking about in terms of the distance involved when they're looking at kilometers as well. So in a 10K race, you would start out with 10 kilometers, and then you're going to multiply by equivalent units and, and basically cancel out uh, these units as we go along until we end up with just miles. That's we want to end up with only miles and then we'll know what the equivalency is compared to 10 kilometers. So, so we can say 10 kilometers, we can multiply that times 1,000 meters per kilometer. That's equivalent, that's equal to 1. There's 1,000 meters in 1 kilometer, so these are it's equal to 1, so you're just multiplying by 1 so it doesn't change anything, so that's okay to do. We just cancel out the units as we go along. So here, kilometers is in the top and it's also in the bottom, so that can cancel out. Then we can say that, well, there's 1.094 yards in a meter. And, and again, this is just equal to 1 because it's the same amount on the top as on the bottom. And we cancel out now the units of meters as we go along. And finally then we can say, okay, well, there's 1 mile per 1,760 yards. And notice how I'm purposely setting this up so that I can cancel out units as we go. I need a unit in the top and a unit on the bottom. That's why I didn't say 1,760 yards per mile. While that's correct, there are that many yards per mile. Um, that would not allow me to cancel out the units. And in fact, I'd end up with yards squared, and that's not what I want. I want to end up with miles. Now, I'm ending up with just miles. So now what we simply do is multiply everything that's left. So we're going to take this 10 and the 1,000 and the 1.094 and the 1 and multiply all that together. And when we go ahead and do that, we're going to get 10,940 so 10,940 on the top and on the bottom we're going to have 1,760 And notice our units are still miles. And then when we just go ahead and, and reduce that down um, and just divide that out, what that ends up being then is, is going to be just about, and again, it's not, this isn't completely exact it's it's a it's we're we're uh, rounding it off some but it's about 6.2 miles so if you ran a 10 kilometer race that would be about the same as 6.2 miles so now what we're getting to is um, it's important to keep these dimensions straight now you look at this problem well maybe it's not critical if if you're really running more or less miles than you think uh, in a race like this, although it, it, it's important, um, in some areas it's, it's crucial. Uh, what I'd like you to do is see if you can research the Gimli glider. It's something I'll be talking about in class. Um, and the first person that can tell me what happened with that and get as specific as you can will get five math bucks um, for for looking into that. But I'd like you to, to uh, make an effort to look into that and see what happened and we'll talk more about that in class. Again, it's called the Gimli Glider. Find out what you can about it. Thanks a lot. Take care.
and we'll see you real soon. Have a wonderful day.